So what day of Christmas is it? Third? That's the common mistake, but I'm glad you, you got, were brave enough to answer. I mean, most of these people are sitting out there, I don't want to be wrong, he's going he's gonna to laugh at me or something. 
So um, how many days in January are in the traditional, not the contemporary Christmas season? We have anybody that knows anything about Shakespeare, Twelfth Night? You do? do, you, do you do? And, and Twelfth Night is on what date? January 6th? Is that what I heard you say? I don't think so. January 6th? So that's, there's six days of Christmas in, in, in January, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now if we count backwards from 31, oh, we come up with the 26th of December. From the 26th to the 31st or 6th. So the, the, the 12 days of Christmas are the, the 12 days after Christmas. So it's part of the season. So Christmas is not one of the days of Christmas in the, uh, the song about the partridge and the pear tree and all those kind of things. So anyway, we're on the second, second uh, day of Christmas today. So um, rejoice in that. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace, the peace, the love of Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem of Mary, be with you all. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So don't let them take it away from you. You got 12 days, and actually even a little bit more now with the contemporary season. So um, just rejoice in this, uh, in this experience of Christmas. And um, it doesn't have to be presents and turkey and ham and, and uh, all kinds of ornaments and things. It can just be the reflection on um, the incarnation. And so today is the feast day of the Holy Family. So we have this sense of the incarnation. The incarnation uh, is not an abstract thought, a very tangible and real implications that Jesus was born, of course, in simplicity uh, in the manger, um, late in the manger, and, uh, and, and that he lived and grew up in a family, that he was obedient unto his parents, as the scriptures tell us, and he grew in wisdom, and that he was totally human as well as totally divine. So we us, uh, our Savior. And at the same time, we see that this is an inspiration for us in the most intimate of families, the found, uh, most intimate of communities, the foundation of society, the family. So the Holy Family, a wonderful feast day during this Christmas season. So as we begin, let us ask the Lord to um, uh, challenge us to be at one with Christ, ever thankful for our salvation, and living out of the same love that God manifested to us within our families. Lord Jesus, you were born uh, 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 of, of Mary in Bethlehem. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Protected and raised and guided by Joseph, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Blessing families for all ages, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate of your house delight 
one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the union of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins, who preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord his ways. You shall eat the fruit Blessed are those who fear the Lord your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his way. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, Put on, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so that they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Then the Magi had departed, and behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child. That what was the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed to the region of Galilee. And he went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called the Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Good morning and Merry Christmas. So this is a season of year that usually families come together and spend some time and, uh, you know, gather around the table and tell stories. And unfortunately, this year is different than most any other year in our lifetimes. We're not able to do that very much. But nonetheless, we still might be reminiscing about certain family histories or stories or experiences. And I was thinking the other day, of when I was about the age of my youngest grandson, who's going to turn six here in just a, a week or so, when I was attending a family wedding, and I was still learning my way around the Catholic Mass, and so my mother was giving me some guidance. And when it was time to sit, she'd give me a little elbow, and I'd sit. Time to stand, I'd get a little elbow, and I'd stand. Or to kneel, and so on and so forth. Well, one time she gave me a little elbow, and I looked at her, and I didn't see any difference in her posture. So I thought it was elbow time. And I gave her an elbow back. Never did that again. I've always kind of affectionately thought of today's celebration, the Feast of the Holy Family, as Elbow Sunday. Because there's something in here for every one of us, isn't there? We hear in Sirach, take care of your father in old age. He gets, uh, and then God sets a father over, in honor over his mother, over his children. And a mother is authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins. And you see the elbows going back and forth between children and father. Husbands, love your wives. Avoid bitterness toward them. Wives, be submissive to your husbands. Children, obey your, your, your parents and everything. We celebrate this feast of the Holy Family because the family is called to be the place where we learn how to live as children of God. It's a sanctuary. It should be a sanctuary of life. It should be where we can learn to grow close to God in all things. And the Holy Family becomes our model in all of this. The family, we can say, is, you know, we look at the Holy Family and say, well, gee, you know, one is God, another was sinless, and another is a saint. How can I be like them? And yet we can learn an awful lot from them because of the way they live their life. St. Francis de Sales had said, we may say that the Holy Family was a trinity on earth, a sort of a trinity on earth, which in a certain way represented the Blessed Trinity itself. Jesus himself is son of God the Father in heaven, and son of St. Joseph. St. Joseph, insofar as Jesus is concerned, is his father. And Mary, who we call the seat of wisdom, conceived by the Holy Spirit, is an image of the Holy Spirit. So the lessons we learn from each of them can be very important to us. St. Paul tells us in Philippians 2 that though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but rather he emptied himself. He became humble for the sake of us. He taught us how to live in humility, how to not build ourselves up beyond what we we're supposed to do. He taught us to love the Lord, love our parents on earth, but yet be devoted to our Father in heaven, as we're all called to do. He taught us that provide, he, to provide for our parents. He provided for his mother uh, welfare when he was about to leave this earth. He said to St. John, Behold your mother. And he provided for her care. 
He loved us so much that he gave his life up for us to make us holy, St. Paul tells us in his letters. And as children of God, we're all called to imitate Jesus in everything that we do. From St. Joseph, we learn an awful lot. St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, he's called the uh, terror of demons and the patron of the universal church in addition to many other titles that he has. And St. Francis just declared this current year that we're in, liturgical year, as a year of St. Joseph. We can learn an awful lot from St. Joseph. He's called the terror of demons because he listened to the Lord. The Lord told him to take and flee. First of all, to not be afraid to take Mary as his wife because she conceived of the Holy Spirit. He trusted and listened to what the Lord told him. He followed the promptings of the Spirit in his life. Something we all need to learn to do. And then when the Holy Spirit came to him in a dream and told him, flee and take the child, and because those, there, those who want to cause harm to him, he followed. He took him to protect him from Herod, who was a demon. How many demons are there in the world today that we need to protect our children from? And fathers are called to be the priests of their homes. They're called to be the ones who protect their homes from all evils, no matter where it comes from. Whether it's over the internet, on the computer, outside the home, in the streets, in the workplace, wherever it might be. Fathers are called to do that. They're called to be terrors of demons for their children, for their wife. And if more fathers were to live that way, we would have a totally different society. We'd have a totally different world. St. Joseph also was listening to God's message in a dream when it was time to take the family back to Israel. And together with Mary, they, the two of them taught Jesus the scriptures. They practiced the faith. We see we're going to celebrate the feast of the presentation in a few, in a few days. We don't have much about the early life of Jesus. We don't have much, we don't have any words at all from St. Joseph in the scriptures. We don't have much about our Holy Mother Mary, but what we do have, we learn an awful lot of what our family life is called to look like. We're called to be a domestic church. We look to our Mother Mary, who's called the seed of wisdom, because she listened, she was conceived by the Holy, she conceived by the Holy Spirit, she listened to the Lord, and she followed, she was not afraid, she said, be it done to me according to thy will. Again, all of us are called to do that. All parents are called to teach their children to live their lives this way. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, as we know. Unfortunately, there are many families who are suffering. They're not living as a domestic church. You and I became daughters, sons and daughters of God in baptism, and we became members of, the holy fam of a family, the family of God, a holy family. We're called to live as holy people. And we need to turn to the Lord and ask for his strength, his help, his guidance, his wisdom. Look to Mary, our mother. Look to St. Joseph, foster father of Jesus. Look to Jesus himself and ask him to strengthen us. How do I live in this world to be a holy family? You know, back in 1994, Pope St. John Paul II declared a year of the family. And he wrote a letter to, the fam to families. And in that he said, who can deny that our age, in our age, this is almost 30 years ago, is one marked by a great crisis which appears above all to be a profound crisis of truth. How true that is. A crisis of truth in our world today because we're living all kinds of different, uh, pro proclaiming all different kinds of uh, ideas and of, of uh, how to live that are contrary to the teachings of our church, contrary to who we are as human beings. There's a great crisis of truth today. He said that the family is to be is undergoing a great struggle between good and evil, between life and death, between love and all that is opposed to love. He said that men and women, particularly in their roles as fathers and mothers, are key to building up a civilization of love in which families are able to give and to receive love at an individual and uh, societal levels. The vision he presented in, a level, in this letter is ever more present today. He said that uh, we need to turn our hearts and our lives over to the Lord. The attack on a nuclear family today is so obvious. We have organizations whose primary mission out there is to destroy the nuclear family. And yet we know that every family needs a mother and a father. Every child needs a mother and father. 
every family should be whole and be the way the Lord had created it to be. In 1994, when St. John Paul wrote his letter, divorce was a major issue, and it still is today. It's a little less today because people, young couples, 18 and above, are not getting married too much later in life. And they're not having children. We're not even re replacing our population today because we're living for ourselves instead of seeking to live for the Lord. Abortion continues to be a major problem, as it was then. 98 children every hour in this country are aborted that we know of. How many more are, are added to that number by chemical abortions, we don't really know. But 98 children every hour. It's a tragedy. And now euthanasia is creeping more and more into our society. I was just listening to Father Smitcher this morning talking about what's going on in, in, uh, in the, uh, the Netherlands where uh, they're trying to allow euthanasia for children under the age of seven. It's horrible what's going on. We're destroying the family in many, so many ways. And the visionary Saint uh, Sister Lucia de, Sant de Santos had predicted before she died, she was a visionary for, at Our Lady of Fatima's Visions in uh, 1919. She predicted in 20, 2005 that the final battle will be with the family. And we're seeing that play out. Unfortunately, we're seeing it play out in a very real way. You know, back in 1958, uh, Fulton Sheen looked at society and said, sometimes you look at what's going on in the world and you almost wish that Noah had missed the boat. <laughs> I wonder what he would say today when you see what's going on in the world. It's a tragedy. But there's a, solve it. There's a way to solve these problems, isn't there? Families need to come together. They need to recognize as mothers and fathers what our roles are. Fathers need to take up their role to be a terror of demons for their families very seriously. They need to own that responsibility that they have to be the spiritual heads of their families. Too many fathers today believe that matters of faith are something left, should be left to the women to do in so many different cultures. That's the case. But that's never been the truth. It's always been that the father is called to be the priest of his own home, the one who leads the family in spiritual matters. He's called to be the head of the home. The mother is called to be the heart of the home. You can't have one without the other and have a normal situation. It's not going to work as well as it should, even though many single-family homes where mothers who are left by themselves to raise their children do a fantastic job. But that's not always the case. So many children are lost, they become, get into trouble because of not having the, the proper relationship with a mother and a father together in the home. The family is to society, as we, you know, we say the family is to society what the cell is to the body. When the family becomes sick, just like the body, if the cell becomes sick, society is going to suffer and not be what it's supposed to be. And so we're called to allow the Lord to guide us today, to guide us in this coming year, to strengthen us in our family life. You know, we celebrate this wonderful season of Christmas. We don't have the blessing of being able to spend as much time, most of us, with all of our families that we normally would spend. Maybe it's going to put a hunger in our heart to, to be closer to that family, to be more loving toward that family, to do as St. Paul says, you know, the most important thing we do, faith, love, uh, faith, hope, and love are all important, but the most important of these is love. Out of love, mothers and fathers need to seek to be what they are called to be to their children with God's help, with the Lord Jesus himself to guide them and strengthen them. Like Jesus, we need to realize that we're all called to be children of God. We're all called to wor wel welcome the Lord into our lives and into our hearts. St. Paul says, regardless of who we are, mother, father, son or daughter, husband or wife, put on God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these, put on love. All are called to holiness, to imitate the Lord. You know, so many families I know I'm sure you know them too, maybe some in your own family. Haven't learned how to forgive. 
So many families are suffering greatly because of some offense, real or perceived, that took place many years ago, caused a rift in a family, and the families are broken apart. That's not the Lord's way. It's not what we pray when we pray the Lord's Prayer. The Lord wants us to be united with one another in our own nuclear families. He wants us to be united with one another in the family of the church. He wants us to be able to follow him in all things. So today, whatever our condition might be, whatever our circumstance might be, realize that we never lose hope. There's always hope to ask the Lord to strengthen us. And feel today the Lord's gentle little nudge waking you up and saying, listen to me, follow me. And maybe some, in some cases, a not so gentle nudge saying, really wake up and change the way you're living your life. Because he's speaking to all of us. And he wants us all to live in the fullness of the grace that he's given us in our baptism. To be one with him for all eternity. Amen. Thanks, Deacon Frank. Those are powerful words. I'm so glad you were here with us to preach today. Um, but as a, a former naval officer, and um, with all due respect to Archbishop Fulton Sheen, it's, it's not a good thing to miss the boat. I can, I can tell you that. I, anybody that was in the Navy or Marine here, you know you don't want to miss the boat. Now, of course, there's probably some exceptions. The Titanic... You know, you, maybe that would be good to miss that boat. So uh, that may have been, a, even if you had a first-class ticket, if you were um, delayed, that might have been a, worked out really good for you. But the ark is uh, one of the images of the, um, of the church. And uh, in the struggles, the, tem tem the, the, the tumultuous waters of the sea and the storm. And so, you know, it's kind of got a nautical feel to it, doesn't it, our, our outside uh, celebration here. And so we can, uh, we can be glad that we caught this boat and that we were here today to hear uh, Deacon Frank in these powerful words. Let us respond now in faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As children of God, let us ask our Heavenly Father to receive these prayers for the human family. Please respond. It's a different response today. Word made flesh, hear our prayers. That the church, that the church look to the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph to be a model of right relationships between clergy, religious, and the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Word, Word made, made flesh, flesh hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our nation may be strong in its support of the family, not allowing the smoke of evil to obscure the strength of husband, wife, and children, we pray. Word, Word made, made flesh, flesh, hear our prayer. That people of the world grow in compassion, humility, gentleness, 
patience, forgiveness, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. That families, through their dedication to God and the honor and kindness they show between each other, may grow in holiness, we pray. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. That Mother Teresa Parish be a true house of God, sustaining its members in their journey of faith, we pray. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. For all those in need, that they find compassion and generosity, especially from Catholic people of faith, we pray to the Lord. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. That we may welcome, care for, and integrate into our parish family the divorced, the widowed, and the orphaned, we pray. Word made flesh, hear our prayer. And for Antonio Sony Garcia, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord flesh, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have made us one family in Christ. As your eternal love joins us closely to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and each other this day and every day, hear our prayers both now and forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, through, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with the angels, uh, we praise you in, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and in, in the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Mother Teresa, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our coadjutor, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. One voice and one heart, let us pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so thank you for attending a live stream Mass. Of course, the, for those who have attended remotely, uh, we will have distribution of communion from 1 to 1.30, even maybe a little earlier, um, right after the 12 uh, noon Mass. Um, please do pick up a bulletin, um, you know, if you, um, if you didn't get a chance to get one at Christmas. So it's the same bulletin that we gave out at Christmas, same calendar. So uh, if you did pick one up you can, uh, on Christmas, you can probably pass it by, but a lot of good information there, including the um, details on the schedule for the Feast of the Solemnity of Mary, also known as New Year's. So the vigil masses will be held on Thursday, December 31st at 5 p.m. in English and 6.30 p.m. in Spanish. Masses on Friday will be held at 8.30 a.m. in English and 7 p.m. in Vietnamese. So there will be no Spanish Mass on uh, Friday evening. Oh, I had some things that I had thought in my head before Mass that I knew were not written down here. I should have wrote, written them down. Uh, let's see if I can think of one of them anyway. Oh, the, um, this week uh, we have uh, various uh, uh, feast days, um, but especially uh, tomorrow is the Feast of the Holy Innocents. So if you'd like to join us tomorrow at 8.30 for the Feast of uh, Holy Innocents, please uh, be a part of that. And, um, and so through this week, um, as we talked about the 12 days of Christmas unto um, uh, the, this following Sunday especially, but even after, um, we will be celebrating great feasts. Of course, next Sunday will be the, the high celebration of the Epiphany, uh, the manifestation of the Lord. So uh, think about coming to daily Mass this week as uh, keeping this Christmas season more reverent and joyful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.